This week we're going to be continuing with our abutments and our embankment. We have our bridge plates in place now, so is uh, this one one abutment on this side and we've got the other abutment on the other side. So then the, the bridge itself will go on the top and sit nicely on there. Well, we've got the bridge in, so we did the bridge piers and now I'm trying to put the little run down to the other centre sidings. So you can see I've got some additional supports. I'm using the little plastic card to get different heights there. So this is slightly higher here comes down slightly lower so I have a piece that goes in here so the transition for the track so the track comes straight off here I don't want to go too sharp down so I've just made some height adjustments there I've got some smaller plastic card here as well to help this piece line up with this particular section so now here these guys will will line up a bit closer together and then when we put on the um, the rail bed foam rail bed can you see now that reaches up or matches very well with the actual bridge level so it's a bit of a complicated affair and now I've got to glue it all down so that it's in one piece we're going to start gluing down this section here as well so I've got to glue the the plastic to the top of the wood and then we're going to glue the the wood down to the base and then I've got to start gluing down this uh, the ramp section here as well so we'll get on with gluing that uh, and then once that's fixed in place, then we can think about putting some other uh, filler all around these, these edges. I'm using the plastic glue to fix the plastic uh, top section. And then I'm using the white PVA glue to fix the wood. So yeah, using two different types of glue. One for the plastic, one for the wood. Here as well, I'm using the plastic glue to stick that plastic to the wood. And then once that's stuck on there, uh, using the white PVA uh, to stick all those together. It's important to get the right positioning, so I'm just careful to line them up with the um, the paper track plan that I've got on the base there. So when I glue everything down, I get it all nicely lined up and um, ready for the, the track bed to go on top of that. Now we've got our section all glued in now. Uh, I've got a little bit of a weight on there just to hold it down um, so that it dries nicely. Um, next thing to do, um, I, I've got to try and work out about filling all these edges, making this nice and tidy. So I think I'm going to use some modelling clay. So I'm going to put some clay around here just to try it out. If it doesn't work, I can pull it off again. But we'll try and use some terracotta modelling clay. I've downloaded a model railway scenery texture sheet. These are bricks, you can see. So I'm just about to print it out and then we can laminate it and then use that around our bridge. Here's our printed sheet. So you can see that, they're very tiny. You can just about see the bricks. So I'm going to laminate this now, I've got a laminator and then we can use it to cut out the shapes that we need. We're going to laminate our sheet. So I've put the paper sheet inside this plastic pouch. And then now we put the plastic pouch inside the laminator. And then that feeds it through automatically. Uh, it's, um, it's a hot laminator. So that like melts the plastic onto the paper so that it goes hard. So there you see it's coming out the other end now. And now that plastic sheet is sealed onto the white paper. So I can use a knife to cut it out. We can cut out sort of some shapes for the bridge um, so that it looks like there's um, you know, brickwork on the bridge. Oh, there you go, that's better. We've made our brick wall up. And so now you can see as we put that in there, then that looks like we've got a brick made pier. Uh, made of bricks. So I've got to I've got to still cut it a little bit to shape. I need to fix this scenery. Oh, I've got some scenery here I need to fix a little bit first. And then as you can see, our bricks will then cover up that little pier there. I'm gonna tidy up here with a little bit of filler because I've got the hole here that I cut out. A bit too much. So we're gonna tidy up. It doesn't need to be perfect. I'm gonna put some grass and other stuff on there later but just really to get rid of the edge so it's not so obvious when we put the brick wall on there. 
Yeah, that's a bit better. And then same thing over here. Just give him, I'm gonna cut him out with a knife afterwards just to tidy up again. But let's just fill in the gaps, most of the gaps. We talked about using some modeling clay for our scenery. Uh, something different, we haven't used it before. So I thought we'd give it a go. So this is terracotta, so yeah, funny color. And we can uh, start to mold it and do, well, make shapes, whatever we like out of it, I guess. So I can you know, put a lump, put a lump there. I don't know what I'm doing really, just trying something. It fills a gap, I guess. I want to build a shelf so we can get some, um, when we put the ballast on, the little stones, I'm going to need a little shelf, otherwise all the stones are going to fall off. And obviously we need to smooth this down to the floor as well. So smooth that in. And I guess, well that's a start isn't it? It's okay. Right, we'll just put some more on the rest now as well. Roll him up and then squeeze him in. What we need, a little bit of water. A little bit of water just to smooth it down a bit. There yeah, that makes it a little bit easier to move around. Smooth it out. Okay, so there's some water on here as well. I'm gonna make it too perfect. Cut some off, I put a bit too much on, I think. I've marked on the board here where the signal box will go, so I've got a little mark there, so I know not to put the clay over where the signal box is going to be. Uh, if I use the cloth, I can get a bit of a textured finish. Uh, so it's not quite so smooth. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know if that really makes much difference, but it might help the glue stick to it a bit better. When I come to gluing it, you know, gluing you know, some grass on it or something else. We're going to put in our next siding over here. So I've already drilled a hole for the wires. I've attached the wires to the, uh, to the track already as attached. We use the pre-made fish plates for that. I've got my other little fish plate on that end. So then now I'm going to try and connect him up and then we will be able to plug him in. Okay, that's in. Get our wires in the other end, put the wire through. I'll try and pull the wires from underneath as it's easier. Mm -mm, the other ones. Okay, so he's in there. And then now I've managed to bend the track, so we're going to have to straighten it out a bit. And then we're going to screw our holes and put our pins in. So I'm preparing this track now, this um, centerpiece track. I've, um, I've cut it to length, so it's the right length now, and I've just marked on the track where I want to put my power wires, and I've marked a hole uh, on the board where I need to drill my hole to push my wires through. So I'm going to be soldering on the wires to the track, uh, drilling my hole, uh, and preparing my fish plate for that other connection, and then I can connect up this piece of track to test it out. We've installed our piece of track there, 
going up the hill with the power connected. So I'm now gonna give a run with a train with three carriages and see if we can make it up. And there you go, you made it all the way up. We'll try coming down again. There you go, coming down no problem as well. I was concerned that that was gonna to be too steep a section, but it seems that we can manage that with that little train and three carriages. So I'm very pleased with how all of that's turned out. Uh, I've been struggling to get this last point positioned, uh, ready to install that last section of track. So I've had to print out the track plan again. So I've positioned it over where all the track should be going. So now I know, you see, I can see where the point goes under there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill some holes through uh, and just pin that point down and then just tear the paper out from underneath. So I know exactly where that's got to go. So we only have one, two, three more pieces of track left to install. So I'm going to do this section here. So what I need to do, I've connected at this end already. So I'm gonna to have to pin this down and then start bending it round so that it bends around nicely to meet up with that piece. And then I've got to cut that and join that. So it's a little bit difficult because I've got to pin this down so that I can join it up later. And there's already a sleeper on this one. So that might be a little bit awkward. So I'm gonna to have to work out how I'll do that. Um, but yeah, so we're going to start that process now. Well, as you can see by the mess, that turned into quite an operation. I've managed to get it all cut in, nailed down, so everything is in place. I just did a test run with a carriage and it all works fine. And now I've got to do this outside section here, which again is going to be a little bit complicated. So we'll see how we get on with that one. And of course, in all the rush, I forgot to drill my hole for the point motor. So I'm gonna to have to remove this point and drill that hole before I put this other piece of track in. Hole drilled and now I've got to reinstall that point back onto there so I can carry on with the other track. Of course now I'm on my nearly my last piece of track I've worked out that the best way to drill holes through these sleepers is to do it on a hard surface otherwise what happens is I'm bending the sleepers and pulling them off the chairs so I've done that on most of the track I've made mistakes already but hey so I'm going to drill these holes on the uh, on the hard surface, uh, several holes ready to bend this track for that last uh, that last section that's got to go in. Um, and um, yeah, once I've drilled all the holes, then I can then drill through on the board and then pin them down. Well, I checked all the clearances out for my bridge. Um, I just felt like getting the land train out and giving him a run. And here we go. Well, and can you see now, the land train catches on the bridge. So those tanks won't make it under the bridge. So either I have to raise the bridge slightly, or when we run the layout, we won't be able to run the tanks under the bridge. So I don't quite, I need to think about what I'm gonna do. I've had to raise the height of the bridge uh, on the left and the right hand side. I've got one additional layer here and I've got again well one pretty much one additional layer there as well I'll glue them all together and then fix them to the abutments thanks for joining us this time we'll see you next time 835